that was close. There's a boy standing there. Afternoon, boy. Hello. Hello, who are you? I'm George Stobart. That's a weird name. No, it's not. But it is. No, listen. Stobart is a perfectly normal name. Stobby? <laughs> My name is not weird, okay? Stobber, Stobby, Stobbo. Who would have imagined this? I travel halfway around the world to have an argument about my name with a boy with the intelligence of a banana. My dad has a better name than you, mister. So, what's his name then? Flap? No, nope. Ferdinand Irvine. Where's your father now? He went out. Told me to wait here, but he ain't come back yet. What's that toy you're playing with? It's a Freggy. A Fremmy? Freggy, don't you know anything? It's a sort of rubber ball. Looks funny. When did you last see your father? About three hours ago. Nothing seems to have changed around here. Even the receptionist is the same guy. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon, monsieur. What can I do for you? Have you recovered from the shock? I beg your pardon? I know I shouldn't have let her loose on you, but I had no other option. If you understand. No, uh, no, I don't understand. Lady Piermont, the pianist and magistrate. Ah oh, oui, the madame in violet, the beast, mon ami. Oh, well, she wasn't that bad. A literal eccentric, but okay. You are not a target, if you don't mind me saying. I guess you're right. I'd like to hire a room, please. One moment, please. I'm afraid we don't have any rooms left. Really? But there doesn't seem to be much going on here. Uh, that might be your first impression, but come the evening, come the guests. This hotel will be busy then. Damn it. Pardon? Never mind, just thinking out loud. The door is locked. I can't. Probably not. It's a hotel reservation belonging to a certain Ferdinand Irwin. Double room, one adult, one child. Hiding Irwin in a well-known hotel is not the most creative idea the Parisian police ever had to protect the witness. If I can just get into that room... Afternoon, boy. Hello. Oh, good afternoon. It's a hotel reservation. Hmm. Hi, me again. Hello, Stobby. Listen, would you like to play a little game? Oh yeah, a game. Freggy. Gets boring after a while. Here's the deal. We'll go to the receptionist together. Reptor... what? That man over there. Uh-huh. And there, we're gonna play father and son, alright? Sounds good. Me again. I can see that. What can I do for you this time? I reserved a room. Ah, uh, have you? 
May I see your reservation? There you go. Mr. Ferdinand Irvine and son? Brian. Arthur. Pardon? Arthur. Brian is his middle name. Okay, the here's the key to room number 122. Thanks. I wish you and your son a pleasant stay. I don't... That's too big. The first picture shows the assassination attempt on Mayor Lemire. A short distance from the action, a person catches my eye, hastily running away. She's looking over her shoulder, as if she's been caught doing something wrong. She's a medium-sized, slender, obviously wearing a bad wig. Wait a minute. I know that face. I is that Nico? The second picture was taken at night, but I instantly recognized the place it was taken. Mafasan. Some people wearing robes, almost impossible to make out. Somehow I have a feeling that there wasn't a children's birthday party. There's a woman in the middle. She seems to be talking to someone. I have a bad feeling about this. The third picture confirms my instinct. It's a close of the woman. It's Nico! She's about to pull the hood deep over her face. Ivan must have taken the shot just moments earlier. Who's she talking to? An older man is standing next to her. His robe is different from those the others are wearing. It's more elaborate. Around his neck, he's wearing a big brown cross. The Templar's Cross! Definitely their leader, Big Boss, has turned his face away from the camera. I can't see who he is. I don't know how Nico got into this mess, but I have to help her as quickly as possible. It's time to get some answers from Nico. I'm not thirsty at the moment. Wait a minute, what's this? A parade? There are huge barriers blocking the way to Rougerie. Just my luck. I must find another way. Hi. Have you been standing? Sprechen Sie Dutch? Parlez von Francais? His eyes tell me that he understands all right. He just doesn't want to talk. I hate... Hello, excuse me. They don't even... He seems to be following the parade. They don't... Pardon me. Oh, hello. Could you tell me what's being celebrated here? Yes, this is the traditional opening march. Opening what? You don't know? The annual Parisian city market. It will open its gates tomorrow. That's interesting. Can you tell me how to get to Rougerie? Well, that's just bad luck, monsieur. The parade will take about two hours. But I have to get there. My girlfriend lives there. I live there myself. I should be at home with my wife and kids, but c'est la vie, monsieur. Come on, celebrate with us instead of complaining. Thanks, but I'm not in the mood for parades. Besides, two psychotic killers are chasing me. Would you celebrate it? That sounds really exciting. 
Believe me, I'll take Dahl any day of the week. I can't wait till the parade is over. There must be another way. I'm off. Enjoy the parade. Thanks, and good luck, monsieur. That balloon bursts like... I like it. The passers-by don't. They look at me even more grimly than that goat that time in Lachmar. At least there's a passage now. That's just my luck. Yes, nice doggy. I was told that my uncle was part of their cult. Georges, at the time I had no idea that it was the Neo Templars. I only wanted to help him. I infiltrated their order under the false name of Christine Wu to get my uncle out of there. But when I met him, there I was stunned. His eyes were just empty like a dead man's gaze. It was very disturbing. He seemed to have been drugged. But worse than that, he kept stammering the word gate. Do you know what he meant by that? No idea. It's possible that it was just the drugs. That would explain both his gaze and his stammering. Why was your uncle part of the Templars anyway? I guess he couldn't resist the temptation. Temptation? Yes, George. Two million euro. <laughs> hey, on second thought, the Templars aren't such bad folks after all. But this talk about a gate worries me still. But that's probably a result of the drugs. True. It could be. But maybe it has something to do with the Templars' plans. You might be right. Where would you start your investigation? Hmm. The only one who knew about my plan was a good friend of André. A good friend? Yes, a friend. Nothing more. What's his name? Jimmy McLough. An English historian, whose main field is the Templars. Why did you let him in? Because he could provide me with inside information about the Order. Have you met him in person? No, I avoided that. After all, it might have been a trap. We only exchanged emails. So he's never actually seen you or heard your voice? No. Do you think he might have given you away? It's possible. Maybe I should pay him a little visit. I don't think that's a good idea, Georges. The Templars are involved with everything. So why not with McLough? But we can't just sit and wait until the Templars get what they want. Who knows what they're up to this time? Hmm. Where can I find this Jimmy McLaugh? He has a mansion in York, England. England, huh? I've never been there. And it means something if there's a place I've never been to. George, please stop bragging. But it's a fact. Where exactly can I find McLaugh? As I've said, I've never met him. But as Andre told me... Then we'll never find him. Can't you forget your childish rivalry for one minute? Not for a second. Anyway, you should start at the York Library. McClough is a scholar, so he should be registered there. Maybe you can find his address in the personal file. Take a map at the airport. The library should be on there. Will do. I'd better be going. Wish me luck. Okay, Georges. Take care of yourself. I'll ring you as soon as the plane lands. This is a York map. I'm over here. And the public library is over here. There isn't much going on. What's that hammering noise? As I turn my head toward the Victorian desk, I see the source of the insufferable noise. The librarian is torturing her keyboard. I hate computers. Might be connected to the fact that I'm not very computer literate.
Who knows, might be useful. A small red... She's typing something up. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, please? Do you know anything about the Templars? Only a little. They were a pop group that made quite a splash in the 60s, you know. The ones with the mop-top hairdos. I think the group you're talking about were the Beatles. The Templars are some sort of chivalric order whose descendants tried to take over the world recently. You don't believe me, do you? Not really, sir. There's not much going on today, is there? You're right. It's because Revolution Software is holding a public launch of their new computer game. It's called Broken Sword. Do you know it? I don't, and to be honest, it doesn't really sound that great. I don't think it'll be a success. In a few weeks, no one will be talking about it anymore. So, what are you writing there? None of your business. Sorry, I only asked. I was joking, sir. My late mum always told me be friendly and funny to all the people you meet. Yeah, very funny. Stop making fun of me. I'm sorry, I... I was just taking the mickey out of you. Stop it. Okay, I see. You're not a humorous person. Yes, I am. I can be extremely funny. Why did the blonde climb up a glass wall? Uh, there was someone outside the door who told me that joke. Don't you think that kind of joke is cruel? Well, let's change the subject. I need some information about one of your members, Jimmy McLaughlin. I'm afraid that's impossible. Why? Because I can't just hand out private information to a complete stranger. Data protection, you see. Sure, but I'm not a stranger, am I? Aren't you? Then you must be Michael Burns, the one Mr. McClough said was his best friend. Yes, I am. Funny I made the name up. Damn it. <sighs> Bye! I haven't read a book not dealing with the Templars in a while. He looks red. Excuse me. Yes? My name is Stobart. Ah, uh, hi. My name's David. Hi, David. Does the word Templar ring any bells? Sorry, I don't know anything about that. I'm studying animal science and it's nothing about animals, is it? Actually, it kind of is. A weasel and a gorilla are working for them. A weasel and a gorilla? How? Ah, uh, that's a long story. Ah, I see. Unfortunately, I'm in a bit of a rush with this. I have to hand in my essay next Monday. And I haven't even half finished. Cheer up. I'm sure you'll make it. Thanks. I wish I had your confidence. Do you know if the librarian's always so strange? You mean Mrs. Leroy? Not always. She's just having a bad day today. Her computer. The one she watches over like her own child has already crashed twice today. It's made her a little jumpy. Now she has to catch up on an incredible amount of work, which explains why she's literally bludgeoning her keyboard. Why did her computer crash? Because some electrical cable in the basement doesn't work properly. It takes at least an hour until that can be repaired. And now, poor Miss Leroy has to do all the work by herself. Don't you have a janitor? The caretaker is at a presentation. Something about a computer game. I see. Listen, David, can you tell me where I find the fuse box in the basement? What do you want to do there? Things. Well, down the stairs, second door to the right, then left and down the corridor. Thanks, I wouldn't have found it by myself. Now I know where to go in the basement. It says York United.
Damn, it's stuck. This sh Mrs. Leroy leaves her desk. Hmm, let's see. Here's the card index. Manish, Marworth, McKinsley. Aha, there it is. McGlaw, Rangersfield Hall. Somehow, I have a bad feeling about this. This stately home somehow reminds me of the Villa de Vasconcelos. Hey, I was a complete failure in geography class, and I made. But this must be the famous Clifford's Tower, and it's being highlighted by a rainbow. Somehow, I feel nervous. Somehow. How can I help you? Hi, my name is Stobart. George Stobart. I have an appointment with Mr. McGlaw. Strange. He didn't tell me about it. Besides, he has a visitor right now. It's really important. Okay, come in. I'll show you the way. Thanks. Mr. McGlaw's room is at the end of the Northwest Passage. It must be cold up there in the Arctic region. Thanks very much. Without the seal, we won't have a chance. That could cause problems. And you think this American knows something? Definitely, he's real nosy. If you're right, we'll get all the necessary information about the order. How will we catch him, Jimmy? I've had two of my best men take care of him. We should be here soon. Even though I can't stand the man, we did agree that you wouldn't hurt him. You only want his information. Sure, that's what I said. Could I use your toilet, please? Of course, it's just down the corridor. Josh! Andre, you sneaky traitor! It's not what you think! They only want to talk to you. Oh no! Mr. Stobart, we'll talk to you later. In the meantime, you can get familiar with your new roommate. If you aren't familiar already, that is. I can't see who he... Who are you? 
You seem surprised, Mr. Stobart. How did you... You're not the only one who can play tricks. But I saw you lying dead on the floor of the train compartment. Immediately before I got on the train to Bannockburn, I put on a bulletproof vest. After all, unlike you, I knew what was ahead of us and who we would encounter along the way. A blood cartridge was an incredibly useful means to feign my own death. And how did you escape? That's a very long story. I have followed George to England. I haven't heard from him since his arrival in York. That's not like him at all. I'm really worried. There's something in my bag, but the usual items carried by any woman. And a phone number. Jimmy McClough? Who is speaking, please? My name is Nicole Collard. I'm a TV journalist with the French channel Canal 1. We were thinking about airing an extensive portrait of you, which would include an interview. After all, you're one of the most renowned historians of our time. Hmm. It sounds really tempting. But I think I'm going to have to turn you down. That would be a great pity. We're one of the most successful channels in Europe. Our ratings are very high, which would guarantee that your portrait would find a great audience. You would be able to tell generations of people about your views on some of the most historic events. I mean, you're one of the very few allowed to oversee the preparations for the first moon landing. You were able to follow Armstrong, Aldrin, and the others during their training for the mission. It would be a shame if the public were denied these unique insights. I must admit that you've done your research well. Thanks. Under the circumstances, I'd be happy to meet you here at my house sometime. This may sound a little forward, but how about conducting the interview today? Today? You TV people move awfully quickly, don't you? That's our trademark. Very well, then. I will be at my house at two o'clock. For reasons of security, I can't tell you my address over the phone. But you can meet my secretary at the History Museum. She's leading a tour for a group of children there. I'll phone her and tell her you're coming. She'll bring you here. I'm sorry that I have to make it this complicated, but there really is no other way. There have been attempts to assassinate me. It seems as if I don't only have friends. I'll wait for you till two o'clock. That's in 20 minutes. If you're not there by that time, We'll have to postpone our meeting by about three weeks because I'm going on a three-week business trip today. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Derek Stevenson. I'm with the York Police Force. There has recently been an unpleasant increase in theft of luggage at this airport. That's why we are carrying out a routine search. Please stay calm. There's no need to panic. But apart from the airport staff, nobody will be permitted to leave the premises while the search is underway. This should take no longer than 40 minutes. My colleague will give you all further instructions. We apologize for the inconvenience and thank you for your patience. Damn, I have to be at McClough's house in 20 minutes. Wait a minute, only airport and flight personnel are allowed. Don't I look like one? That's beside the... May I see your ID, please? You know, regular... There's a slight problem with that. My husband mislaid my handbag this morning, and, and now I'm unidentifiable, so to speak. Sorry, miss, but without an identity card, I can't let you leave the premises. Okay, I understand. Excuse me? Yes. Oh, Miss Collard. Do we know each other? I met you and George in 
Quaramane about four years ago. George was in prison, and you were going to a meeting with General Graciento. Do you remember? I do now, but I don't remember your name. Dwayne Henderson. I was there shopping with my enchanting wife, Pearl. Ah, oui, Monsieur Henderson. Nice to see you again after such a long time. How are you doing? So-so. I'm looking for George. Ah, oh, George! How is he? I'm afraid I don't know. I haven't heard of him in a few days now. That's how men are. Sometimes they need some distance from us women. He'll call you back, honey. Hmm, that's not really George's style. Well, George does behave a little strange occasionally. What brings you to York? Pearl and I are here on a stopover, on our way to Morocco. We want to have a look at some old ruins there. And as we're there anyway, we'd like to do a little shopping tour. Here in York, we've already seen the traditional happiness fair. You travelled all this way to see a fair? It's not just some fair. It's possibly the most important invention in entertainment in living memory. Apart from the TV, maybe. Besides, the second biggest wheel in the world is here in York. When we arrived, it was closed for repairs. I'm sorry? There's no need. We went on the water roller coaster twice instead. Whee, that was fun. Especially when you kept screaming into my ear all the time. Don't be so prickly, Bumblebee. Oh, Bumblebee. May I ask you how long you and George have known each other? Since we met in Syria. That was in 1994, I believe. 1996. In 94, we visited my grandparents in Canada. Oh, yes. Terribly boring there. And all those strangely dressed policemen. Mounties! What? Those policemen you're talking about are called Mounties. Whatever. Those poli... Mounties were constantly watching us and kept inquiring. Life isn't easy in Canada for an American tourist. Those Mounties were just being nice and polite. I don't think it's nice and polite to ask how I'm doing and where I'm going three times in a row. That's intrusive. That's what it is. If you say so, honey. It's really interesting to listen to you, but unfortunately I haven't got much time. Have you ever heard of a historian called Jimmy McClough? Oh yes, we were in his museum. The History Museum. That's the one, you know it? Not really, but I have an appointment with his secretary. After that, I'm going to meet Mr. McClough in person. You are going to meet Mr. McClough? The Jimmy McClough? Yes, in about 20 minutes. If I don't make it in time, I'll miss my chance and I'll have to wait three weeks. But with this search going on, I can't get out of the building. That's a disaster. You don't get to meet Jimmy McClough every day. If we can help you in any way, just let us know. Okay, thanks. What makes this fair so special? It's simplicity. There aren't so many attractions there. But these few are just marvelous. Well, I've never been a fan of fairs. You're missing out! You didn't by any chance see Georges at the fair, did you? No, I don't think so, did we, Dwayne? Don't think so. Sorry. Well, thanks anyway. Bye. Goodbye, dearie. This entrance is for staff only. Stop. You this entrance is...
I must see your... Well, I left it in... May I fetch it? Section 4, paragraph 3 of operational guidelines clearly states... No access to sealed areas for unauthorised persons. Maybe you could fetch my bag for me. Well, not really, but I suppose I could make an exception. What does it look like? Well, there are small hearts on its left side, spelling out, I love you. One moment, please. I'm afraid your bag is not... And you really can't let... Section... Okay, okay, I un- It's me again. What can we do? F Could you do me a favor? Yes? Could you somehow distract that watchman over there? That police officer? Exactly. Do you want to get into that room? It's my only chance to get out of the building before my 20 minutes are up. Okay, we'll help you. Excuse me, sir. What can I do for you, ma'am? May we take a photo with you? You don't see a real British policeman every day. Especially when you come from America. It's an honour, ma'am. But you know, we have a policy. To hell with your policy. Might be useful sometime. The uniform appears to be my size. Hmm, such things tend to happen every time things start to get interesting. A pity, isn't it? Damn, it doesn't fit. Hmm. I'll need that one soon. Someone's stuff uniform. Damn, the watchman must have locked the door. I've got one of those in Paris. Only mine looks better. Me again. Yes, please. Here's my ID. Is that really you in the photograph? Of course it's me. Who else should be on my ID? Okay, miss. Mrs. Sorry, Mrs. Mrs. Wanda Kirsch. Okay, that's the name on this ID card. So you can't have stolen it. If you only knew. Pardon? Nothing. Excuse me, can you tell me what all this commotion is about? I have to get into that museum. Don't we all? Maybe, but it's different with me. Yeah, me too. Is the Prime Minister paying a visit? There'd be less of a fuss then, wouldn't there? Heiko McEwen is visiting the museum. I don't know him. Well, he's the reason you can't get in. And when does he arrive, this Haidu... 
Haiku McEwen. All right, Haiku McEwen. When does Hai he arrive? He's scheduled to arrive at three o'clock, but it may take longer. Is there another way into the museum? Not a legal one. Okay, thanks for your help. If you can call it that. A pleasure. If you can call it that. Are you Mr. McClough's assistant? Who wants to know? My name is Nicole Collard. Oh, right. The journalist. We should hurry or we'll be late. Okay. This is Mr. McClough's estate. I think you can find your own way from here. I have to leave you here. My group of children are waiting. Thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure. Goodbye and uh, good luck with your interview. I take a look at my watch and I notice that I'm five minutes late. What am I to do? No, I must... I might need it later. George? Live and in color. Each time we get separated, I find you behind bars. I guess it's just bad luck. What happens this time? I'll tell you later. First, meet an old acquaintance. Mademoiselle Kala. Good to see you again. You evil, deceitful idiot. I thought you were dead. Nico, calm down and get us out of here first. Us? You don't expect me to get this murderer out of here, do you? Yes, I do. Come on, I'll explain everything later. When I was young, I used to watch Western movies with my father. The crooks usually get out of jail by using a horse and a lasso to pull the bars out of the wall. Maybe it works in real life too. The hose is too loose. This could work. Get out of here. I think they're coming. Very well, Khan. How were you able to survive the attack? Out with it. You know, my father was a very popular illusionist. Night after night, he'd fill concert tents. The audience loved him. Shortly before he died, he taught me his most important tricks. I learned to disguise and to hoodwink other people, trick them. And it obviously worked. And why did you do that? Instead of pretending to be dead, you could have helped us back in Bannockburn. You might have been extremely helpful. You made it without me. We did, but mainly thanks to a huge pile of luck and an equally huge pile of plastic explosives. And because of that idiot Guido, he really tried to blow out the fire with his mouth. I wouldn't have been too helpful anyway. Why not? I lied to you in the train. We weren't on the same side all along. I was a professional killer, a mercenary who risked his life for money. I don't understand. I knew the Templars before the incidents in Paris, Bannockburn or Syria. But not because I used to pay much attention in history class. I was simply hired by them. You worked for the Templars? 
That's exactly what I'm saying. One hundred thousand dollars were a good reason to start working for the Neo Templars. My first job was killing a politician in Japan. Then I came to Paris. That was the Plantard job. And why the hell did you try to kill Georges? Yes, why did you try to kill me? He was just an unpleasant witness, that's all. However, I did become curious myself at some stage, so I started making inquiries. I read everything about the Templars I could get hold of, everything about their past. Old newspapers, articles, medieval documents, journals, simply everything. Naturally, the Templars didn't like that, so I was put on their blacklist myself. And that's what caused me to act against them. A hitman seized with remorse. I don't believe it. As stupid as it might sound, but even killers have a soul, Monsieur Stobart. I decided to take your side and help you. But you didn't. You still tried to kill me. Wrong. I was never intending to kill you. Didn't you? Have you forgotten our little meeting in Syria? I haven't. That was an I-don't-know-how-many-feet jump I had to do. As I said, I'm quite good at pretending my gun was loaded with blank ammunition. Um, what? You're telling me I risked my life jumping down there because you threatened me with blank ammunition? It must have been an incredible experience. You said you wouldn't have been able to help us. Why? Very simple. I broke my leg when I fell off the train. What did you do in Jimmy McClough's house? That's a little complicated to explain. Only this much. The Templars still exist. <laughs>